Our lesson is solving multi-step equations, and this is um, sort of the next step after two-step equations. We're going to see why would we have more than two steps and what that really means. So we've talked about two-step equations that might involve, for example, some multiplication and division as well as some addition and subtraction. Number two here on our notes is a good example of that. So what might be the case for us to have more than that, right? Well, really, when we call them multi-step equations, it's typically because before we get it to look like this, really nice and clean, where we, it's really clear to see what two operations occurred, things aren't quite simplified. And that, that's what adds some extra steps to these that we decide to call multi-step. So the reason for reviewing some of the combining like terms or some of the distributive property is because oftentimes we'll have to do that work first so that we can get that equation simplified enough to look simple enough to solve, okay? So the big idea today is that when you have an equation, we're going to add a new step now that they're getting more complex, and that is always simplify each side first if possible. So remember, if I write it down, you write it down, so write that down. So simplify first if possible. And we practice this. That means basically if you see a grouping symbol where you have to distribute, take care of that. If you see like terms that are on the same side that can be combined together, take care of that, right? And then after you have simplified completely, okay, then we solve. So then solve like we have been. So this is really the added layer to today's lesson that we hadn't had to really deal with too much before, okay? So to solve multi-step equation, simplify each side of the equation first if necessary, then use the inverse operations to isolate the variable like we have been. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll start with number two, um, just to do a quick refresher. So if I look at number two, what I wanna do now is just sort of pause and check to be sure that's fully simplified check to make sure I don't have any parentheses that need to be distributed into or any like terms, right? And so I have an F term here and a negative five, so I'm in the clear, but that's, that's what you wanna get into the habit of doing is just checking for those things. And then if it's fully simplified, then typically it should only take you a couple of steps um, in this unit to solve, right? Um, I look at my F, they're dividing by four and subtracting five, so I wanna undo those. And just like we've been saying, we'll start off with the addition or subtraction first. So the opposite of that negative or that minus 5 is a positive. So that'll cancel that here. And then on the left side, we'll still have F over 4 equals, the 5 is gone there. And on the right side, we'll have a new answer here, negative 9 and positive 5. Those signs are different, so we're finding that difference. Okay. And then in the second step... Since they're dividing by 4, we're going to do the opposite, which is to multiply by a 4 on both sides. That'll cancel our denominator, our division. And now we can really finalize our answer with f equals this product, which happens to be negative 16. Did I do everything right there? Negative 16, yeah. Just checked my answer in my head, because that's how we can do that. Okay, so that's just solving a two-step equation, but I just modeled how you want to check to see if it simplifies. So let's take a look at number three and see how that one might look a little different. First of all, it already might strike you that it looks longer, and that's a good sign that it might need to be simplified first. You're absolutely right about that. So it looks definitely looks longer, um, and so when we check for that very first step of simplify first, I ask myself, well, is there anything here that I could clean up to make this look simpler? sort of like one did, or maybe even uh, number two did, right? These two up here. And I if hopefully can recognize, yeah, you have a couple of like terms here that are kind of scattered. Let's gather those up and write that more simply. That's the idea. So if here on the same side of the equal, I have nine Zs and then negative four Zs, nine and negative four, I can combine those like terms and that gives us five. My signs are different, so I find the difference. So I can write that more simply, combining those two like terms into just 5z. And then I still have my constant 
this middle one that did not have a z. It's not a like term. It's a constant, which is just a regular number. And so that's still hanging out here on the left. Don't forget that. And that is all equal to negative 5 on the right. So this is the exact same equation, but look how much easier it is already to look at and work with. And that's what this lesson is all about. Simplify first, then start the solving process. So once we um, have it simplified like this, now I can start to jump in to starting to do that inverse operation and eliminating things. So the opposite of this negative or uh, minus 5 is a positive. We'll do that on both sides of the equal sign. So it cancels that. And so when I, I'm going to rewrite that up here so I have more space. So now I still have those five z's. This constant is gone because negative 5 and positive 5 is 0. And then negative 5 and positive 5 is 0 here. Sometimes that freaks people out a little bit. But, you know, 0 is a perfectly legit number. And sometimes 0 happens. So it's don't let that, you know, make you nervous. Check your work, of course. But if your math is sound, that there's nothing incorrect or wrong about having a 0 there. That is okay. And we still need to finish this problem. So our next step to get z by itself is to divide by that 5, since that's the opposite of multiplying. So we'll do that on both sides. We still want to show that work. And that cancels that. So z is finally by itself, and it just so happens that 0 divided by 5 is still 0. And so that is the correct answer. And it looks kind of weird, but you know what? It happens. That's okay. So that's number 3. Try number four. That one's a good practice, very similar. Combine your like terms and then solve and see what you get for that one. Um, and then we'll move on to a little bit of distribution. Okay, so if you simplified by combining these two like terms into 14x and you are right on track, you have two x terms that can combine together, the four stay. So this is the exact same equation, but much simpler. And then after that, you, you actually start to solve. So we subtract the 4 or do a negative 4. That gives us 35. And then it looks like we divide by 14. So we're almost done here. And so I'll just finish this one off with you so you can check. So you have two options. 14, you can see if it goes in evenly. You can reduce the fraction or actually divide. This is kind of a user's choice. We've talked about this. So you could go to decimal or fraction. You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to a fraction, right? I know 7 goes into both of those. So 7 goes into 35 five times and into 14 twice and that in itself makes it so much easier even if I was going to a decimal that's already a lot easier to realize oh that's just two and a half but I can also leave it as a fraction and be done so two and a half or five halves both of those work okay all right so let's go on to number five um number five we always want to check sometimes it simplifies sometimes not so if I want to look at here uh, at this equation I want to make sure anything I can simplify is. And although I don't see like terms or really parentheses for distribution, I do want to clean this up. You know, we've talked about how these double neg these double signs get very confusing. So I definitely think that part of simplifying is cleaning stuff like plus a negative or minus a negative. That's part of simplifying. Let's write this as simply and easily as possible. So we know that q plus a negative 5 is the same thing as q minus 5. It just means we have a positive Q and a negative 5. So why have two signs when we can say the same thing with one sign? So there it is. And that's really all we can do. There's no like terms and nothing to distribute. So now we're ready to solve. Now, the reason I really like this, for example, is because it's one of the few times where we don't start by eliminating the addition and subtraction. And that's because of order of operations. So remember, we talked about how the long division bar acts as a grouping symbol and it changes our order. So I can't really tap into this until I've taken care of this. It's kind of locking it in, you know. And so we actually need to take care. If I, in other words, think about it this. Remember, we're hitting this in reverse. So if I knew what Q was, I would have to subtract 5, then divide by 3. And so when I'm solving, I'm going to do that in reverse. I'll have to start by getting rid of the 3. Since they're dividing by that, we have to multiply 3 on both sides. That'll take care of that denominator, and it'll open up this so we can solve. So now we've got Q minus 5 is equal to 24. And then we can now work with this now that it's no longer locked up with that grouping symbol. Q minus 5 is 24. The opposite of subtracting or a negative is a positive 5. And so we do that on both sides. This cancels, so we get Q equals 29. And of course, you can always plug it in and check 
to make sure that that works. Okay. All right, let's try number six. Number six has a good example of a parenthesis whose purpose is distribution. So we can see here that there's a parenthesis, but not because I can do the math inside first, because I really can't do this. Well, I, as long as I don't know what Z is, I really can't do the subtraction without knowing that number. This parenthesis has a different purpose. It has a purpose of telling me that they want me to multiply negative four, not just by what's next to it, but by both, right? That's that distributive property. So we wanna make sure we distribute that in. And we'll wanna do that before we proceed. So negative four times Z is negative four Z. Negative four times negative 12 is a positive 48. Negative times negative is a positive. And that's equal to 42. That already looks a lot better. And now I can actually start working with this because it's no longer locked up. Um, or, you know, locked into that parentheses. So no like terms. That's all I had to do, but that is a really important step in that simplification. So now let's go ahead and proceed and start to solve for Z, just like we have been. This is going to be more practice, so I'm going to go a little bit faster now. We'll always get rid of this unless something like this changes. A grouping symbol changes the order. So we've got negative 4Z now, and this difference is negative 6. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, my paper moved. Um... There you go. And then we divide both sides by negative 4. So that z is equal to a negative divided by negative is a positive, and then 6 over 4 is the same as 3 over 2, which is the same thing as 1 half. And, all right, so let's flip that one over. Let's try one that might have even a little bit more complex um, type of simplifying. So let's take a look at number seven. On number seven, um, our variables on the right, so first of all, notice that this is where we're going to want to simplify and solve for r. It's on the right side. And I do see a grouping symbol here that requires some distribution. So let us start with that. Um, if we distribute, this is a big thing that a lot of students, if you're not careful, might make the mistake of not bringing that negative. That negative belongs to the three and it needs to be distributed along with the three. So this is a negative three we are multiplying by. Um, the 33, of course, is on the other side, so we're gonna leave that alone. The 12R was not invited to that party. It's gonna chill for just a moment while we take care of this distribution. So we just bring all of that down and then let's take care of the distribution which is happening really over here. So we've got that negative three times nine. We know that is negative 27. And we also have negative three times negative r. So a negative times a negative becomes a positive, and then the three times the r is just three r. So this should be your result here, okay? And then, right, unlike the ones on the front, we're not quite done. So we did some distribution. Surely it got us closer. But I also wanna notice that after that distribution, I actually now have some like terms that I need to address. And so those are on the same side and they can be combined. So we want to make sure we take care of that. So I'm going to still leave that 33 alone. If I have 12 R's plus another three R's, that's really a total of 15 R's with a negative 27. And that is fully simplified. Notice there's no grouping symbol or like terms left. This is actually simplified and ready to be solved now. So let's go ahead and finish that out. Again, these steps now are big review, so I'm gonna go just a little bit faster. Okay, so that cancels. This gives us 60 equals 15R, and then in our last step, we'll divide by 15. 60 divided by 15 happens to just be four. So R equals four is our answer on that one. Okay, try number eight. Let's see how that one goes, and then we'll try a word problem. Okay, so check to see if you got negative 3 on that one. We distributed the 3 to both of these. That gave us 6G and negative 18. Then you have a couple of constants that can be combined. Positive 7 and negative 18 give you negative 11. And then you can start solving from there by doing a positive 11 on both sides and then dividing by negative, uh, sorry, dividing by positive 6. And that answer is negative 3. Okay, so if that went well, then I think we are in good shape. So we are going to finish off with number nine, and then we will um, do maybe one more of these down here in class as a warm-up. So let's try number nine here. It says you can represent an any odd, an odd integer with the expression 2n plus 1. Okay, 
And so any, any odd number can be written as 2n plus 1. We want to write and solve an equation to find three consecutive odd integers that have a sum of 63. Okay, so let's talk about what that means. We need three numbers that are consecutive, meaning one right after the other, but odd. So odds that are one right after the other. For example, mm -hmm. um, you know, 21, 23, 25, you know, um, that kind of thing. And so we know that we can express the very first one as 2n plus 1. So we could say, okay, well, if I do 2n plus 1, that guarantees me an odd number. Okay. How could I possibly express the very next consecutive? Well, let's think about odd numbers. Like, let's say I started with 5. The next one would be 7, then 9. So it looks like it's always plus 2, right? So if I start in an odd, as long as I add 2, I will land at an odd, right? If I start at 11, if I add 2, I'll get 13. If I add 2 more, I get 15. So I know that if I start off with an odd, all I have to do is take that odd number again and add 2 more, and that'll give me the very next odd. I know that kind of looks kind of funny, right? But it's true, okay? So this guaranteed us an odd according to that, and then the very next one would just be two more than that. And then guess what? The very next one would be two more than this, right? So we could take this number right here and add two more to that. <laughs> and that would give us the very next one. And what they're telling us here is that these three consecutive odd numbers have a sum, so we're adding all of them together, of 63. Wowzers, right? I wanted to do this one with you guys so y'all wouldn't freak out. <laughs> but honestly, it looks very long and intimidating, but it's not too bad. So the first thing I want to remind you is, basically, this expression represents the original. This expression is the original plus 2. So that's just two more, right? Like I said, if this was 9, that's 11. It's two more. And then this expression is this guy plus two more after that. So this is the next number. There's my 2n plus 1 plus 2 and then plus another 2. So it's going up by 2 every time. That's guaranteeing us an odd and then the next odd and then the next odd. Okay? So I hope that made sense. Because now our job is pretty simple. Oh, this looks, looks very intimidating. Our job is actually pretty simple. It's just to combine our like terms. And that's the whole point of why simplifying is helpful because it takes something that looks horrible like this and makes it very easy to read after we simplify. So let's do that. I have several like terms here. I've got 2n, 2n, 2n. So those are definitely like terms and we can combine them and make this already a lot easier to read. 2 plus 2 plus 2 here um, gives us a total of 6n's. So if we combine those, we end up with a total of 6n's. That already looks great, okay? And now let's go ahead and add our constants we have 1 plus 1 plus 2, and so on and so on. And so if we add these constants together, we really end up with 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 2 is 4 um, plus this 5, right? So we add those up, and we really should end up with 9, I believe, right? So this is 5 right here, plus another 3 is 8 plus 1, yeah. So I think it should be plus 9. This is the exact same problem, but look how much easier that is to actually look at. Much easier problem to work through, right? Horribly intimidating, super easy and manageable. That's the beauty of simplifying. Okay, so now we'll just bring this home and find out what these integers are. We'll uh, take away the 9 like we have been. There's that. And when we do that, we get 6n is equal to, that's going to give us 54 and then we'll divide both sides by 6. And I believe that's going to give us um, 8. No, 9, sorry. Okay? So according to this, I believe... Wait, wait a minute. Did I do that right? That is not right. Hmm. Let's try that again. Okay. So yeah, some brush, you know, my multiplication as well. It is 9. So there's our n value is 9. Now be careful here. It said write and solve the equation to find the next three consecutive odds. This is the value of n, but what we really need is what are these numbers, right? So now that we know that n is 9, we'll finish this off by plugging a 9 in and finding out what our three values. So if this n is 9, 9 times 2, so if we do a 9 in here, 9 times 2 is 18, plus 1 is 19. So our first magic number was 19. And then we should be able to pick up from that because then they should be consecutive. So it should be then 21 and 23. So you could plug them in to check them, um, or you could just add 2 each time. But really, if we add those 3 together, 
we get 63, and those are the three consecutive odd numbers that add up to 63. All right, so we'll finish off the last few in class as our warm-up.